As I've said in many of my other videos, the 1920s was a time of modern innovation, when technology developed at a much faster rate. While World War I had brought death and destruction, it also contributed to the development of new inventions and discoveries. Let's go over a few of the ones that happened in the 1920s. Commercial radio was first introduced in 1920. Radio had previously only been used for communication, mostly among governments, militaries, and a few scattered amateurs. But the potential of radio as a marketing tool was picked up on during the gradual economic boom of the 1920s. The earliest uses of radio for commercial purposes are lost to history. Because radio signals could not reach very far in these years, mostly only local businesses used it for advertising, reaching only probably a few hundred people at most. The first commercially sponsored radio program was the Eberetti Hour, which began in late 1923. In exchange for free music by the house band, listeners were urged to buy Eberetti batteries. A fun fact is that the house band singer, the banjo-playing country singer Wendell Hall, was even married live on the air in 1924. If you want to learn more about radio in the 1920s, you can check out my video on that. Amateur archaeology and Egyptology had been popular in Europe throughout the 19th century and continued into the 20th century, but early amateur archaeology had mostly been confined to people seeking riches and or adventure. The actual professional study of Egypt, the Roman Empire, and other ancient civilizations had started to pick up in the decades leading up to the 1920s. The field was forever changed when British archaeologist Howard Carter discovered the interior of King Tutankhamun's tomb in the Valley of the Kings in 1922. The entrance was actually discovered in 1907, but its discoverer thought that the small area was the extent of the tomb and did not dig any further. Fortunately, the excavation was conducted meticulously. The sarcophagus wasn't even discovered until the following year, and King Tut's mummy was only exposed in 1925. After all excavation was finished, thousands and thousands of artifacts were discovered and catalogued. This discovery actually had quite a large impact on 1920s aesthetic. The beautiful, golden, and ornately decorated artifacts, including the sarcophagus lid, furthered the craving for exoticism, especially ancient tastes, in the 1920s. Egyptian motifs and patterns became one of the most popular of all. The hamburger had been around since at least the 1860s in Germany, though the modern version first appeared in the United States around the turn of the century. However, until the 1920s, apparently no one had thought to put cheese on it. It seems so simple and natural to us today, but the first recorded listing of a cheeseburger on a menu is from 1928. But various stories point to the invention of the cheeseburger as being somewhere between 1924 and 1926. The most common story is that it was invented by a 16-year-old boy named Lionel Sternberger while working at his father's sandwich shop in Pasadena, California. We do know that cheeseburgers were definitely being served by the late 1920s because of that menu listing. We'll probably never know who really invented it, but does it really matter? The first talkie is usually considered to be the jazz singer from 1927, but this film only had musical sequences with synchronized sound, and the rest of the film was still in the silent format. But this was enough to whet the appetites of audiences, who were thrilled by the technical innovation and they absolutely wanted more. The first all-talking feature film was the 1928 Warner Brothers film Lights of New York, and from then on, after a brief transition period, sound films were the new standard and quickly overtook silent films. However, the phonofilm process, created by inventor Lee DeForest, had actually been making shorts with synchronized sound and picture since the early years of the decade. But these shorts only saw a limited release to theaters because most major theaters were owned by big film studios, who had their own synchronized sound process. This competing process was called Vitaphone, which used a phonograph disc that would be played and amplified simultaneously with the film. Due partially to a lack of faith in phonofilm, Vitaphone became the leading sound film technology, and was first used in the 1926 film Don Juan. However, the sound on disc process was flawed because films were usually still hand-cranked, so getting perfect synchronization was difficult. 
And actually, the jazz singer used the Vitaphone process, so it didn't quite use exactly the same process that eventually took hold in the film industry. It might be hard to believe, but television actually made its first appearance in the 1920s. The first television broadcast was sent on January 13, 1928, by Dr. Ernst Frederick Werner Alexanderson. Yes, so close on the heels of radio, TV was already being developed, but of course, it would only become widely used in the 1950s. The TVs that Alexanderson used had only one and a half inch screens, and the broadcast was seen by a whopping four people, all executives at General Electric. But that was only the picture, the sound was simultaneously broadcast on radio. The following month, the Scottish electrical engineer, John Loge Baird, sent the first television broadcast across the Atlantic. As you can probably imagine, the quality was terrible and very few people would have seen any of this. The development of television would continue to be a slow and complicated process. Outside of technical innovation, one of the most important medical discoveries of the 1920s, and really of modern history, was penicillin. The Scottish biologist Alexander Fleming famously discovered penicillin by accident in 1928. In the midst of studying a certain bacteria that I can't pronounce, Fleming left his lab and went on a family vacation. When he returned, he found that one of the samples had been contaminated and had developed a fungus. Instead of ignoring it, Fleming studied the fungus and discovered that it contained antibacterial properties. He published his findings the next year, in 1929, and although it didn't receive much attention, penicillin became invaluable during World War II, and was responsible for saving the lives of many injured soldiers. Fleming was eventually awarded the Nobel Prize in 1945 for his contributions to science and medicine. So that's my list for this video. If I find enough things to justify making another video, I definitely will. And if you have any suggestions for more list videos about the 1920s, please let me know in the comments. Well, that's all for now all you sheiks and gals out there, but stay tuned for more tales from the Jazz Age.